Washington, D.C., a place that needs a lesson in liberty. So I'm excited that tonight I'm surrounded by college students, more than a thousand of them who traveled here for a Students for Liberty conference. They came to learn about good government and freedom. Here in Washington? <laughs> Well, the conference is here, but in D.C. we're surrounded by Democrats who want to take away my economic freedom and Republicans who want to take my personal freedom. So I'm glad there's a third party, although it hasn't gotten much traction. But this year, the Libertarian presidential candidate got more than a million votes. And that, of course, was Gary Johnson, former governor of New Mexico. And he continues to fight for liberty, as does David Bowes of the Cato Institute. He's one of the people who taught me about liberty. So, Gary, why didn't you win? <laughs> I think the biggest factor in this uh, race was uh, voting for the lesser of two evils. Afraid that Romney was going to win, so uh, vote for Obama. Afraid Obama's going to win, so vote for Romney. There, there's a big disconnect between those that describe themselves as libertarian and vote libertarian. What? I, um, I... I don't know, given the fact, <laughs> given the fact that really it's it's cool to be libertarian. It's cool uh, to be socially uh, uh, accepting and fiscally conservative. David, you made me laugh the other day, saying it's cooler to be a libertarian than a Republican. Well, that's certainly true. <laughs> is it <laughs> certainly on campus? That. Is it, right? Is it uh, cool to be a Republican on campus? No. But is it cool to be a Democrat? I don't believe you. I think the Democrat <laughs> on campus. Well, that might be a little wishful thinking, although cool might be going too far. I'm sure a lot of college students think it's better to be a Democrat than to be a Republican. There's a lot of understanding in the United States. First, that the old rules, of, you know, anti-gay rules, anti-drug rules and things are going to be washed away. And there's clearly an understanding. I think every American knows that the American welfare state is bankrupt. So everybody knows the problem. They just haven't yet come around to wanting to fix it. And fi fixing it involves less government. But Gary, you point out that it's just easier to be Santa Claus. Well, it is, but uh, significant, I think, is the fact that marriage equality did pass in uh, several states. Uh, marijuana legalization, Washington State, Colorado, these, these are significant. Uh, but when, on when, spending, they're talking about sequestration like it's a catastrophe, a tiny cut. Yeah, just an absolute tiny cut. I mean, just minuscule cut uh, relative to what does need to occur. If we don't balance the federal budget, uh, we're going to find ourselves without a country. We're not immune from default. Uh, that, that's where we're headed. Students, you have questions for either of them. Hi, I'm Connor Bergeron from Brentsville High School. And my, first, my question is, how can we convert or get the liberty libertarian movement message out to the high school community because none of my friends even know about it. Well, I'm trying. My videos go into <laughs> high schools. 12 million kids watch them a year, every year. So some of you saw that, but I, uh, I'll, I'll tell you. Well, uh, I, I was taken aback. I, I was um, uh, invited to speak at a high school in Ohio, and it was packed. And I w walked in, and it was a standing ovation. The point being is that that high school kids are very aware also that this is, all I can say is that this is a growing movement, unquestionably. At what point do libertarians actually take power? Does that ever happen? Well, I don't think we should stop being vigilant to potentially making that happen. And by take power, you mean take it and then give it up? Take it and, well, that's and, we and, and, and that's... <laughs> just, you, you, you have hit it on the head. Politics is all about electing me and keeping me elected. That's all politics is. And if we could just get away from that, the whole notion of citizen service, get in, get out. Um, I, I'm Ella Peterson. I'm from the University of Denver. And um, within the liberty movement, there's a big debate over whether politics or ideas are more important for advancing the, the liberty movement. You know, I read a great quote from Margaret Thatcher this week. Um, Margaret Thatcher said, first you win the argument, then you win the vote. So I think winning the argument is more important, but political leaders are one of the ways that arguments get thrashed out. 
I, I just want to relay my own experience, which is uh, getting elected governor of New Mexico in a state that's two to one Democrat. Um, I actually got to be running as a Republican. Running as a Republican, uh, un, actually, as a Libertarian under the guise of being a Republican, it worked. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Matt Hissey, and um, I just graduated from Westchester University. I happen to be, um, I identify as a gay Republican, and my question is, um, I believe that it's very important that we work within the party structure, and how would you say is the best way to go about doing that, being that the party tends to not support my community? You mean Republicans? Republicans, yes, Republicans. Um, you do like anybody else does in politics. There weren't any gay Democrats 25 years ago, and they started organizing. First, they have to come out of the closet, and then they have to organize, and they have to demonstrate to other people in the party, we're here, we're Republicans, we're working for the party, we want the party to change on this particular issue. And the Republican Party reacted very negatively when black people started demanding their civil rights. And now Republicans wonder why black people don't want to vote for them. The Republican Party reacted very negatively when women started demanding the right to have careers and be involved in politics and economic life. And now Republicans wonder why women don't want to vote for them. And now we're in an era where Republicans are at reacting really, really negatively to gay people demanding simple legal equality, equality under the law. So my advice, if there are any Republicans watching, is don't do the things today that will cause you 20 years from now to say, how come gay people won't vote for us? Thank you, David Bowes, Governor Gary Johnson.